Girls, happy Tuesday. Today is um, day 12 of MTI, Tuesday, April 7th. And today we are starting module six, the coordinate system. So if you would like to get uh, your math notebook out and ready to go, um, you can write coordinate system at the top of a, your next clean notebook page. If you need to pause um, so you can get your notebook and get set up, uh, go ahead and do that now. The first word that I want to talk about with you all is uh, origin. And today we're going to keep it very simple with just a number line with the coordinate system. We're only going to be using one number line. And so the origin on the number line is actually the zero on the number line. And so, um, you know, if you think of origin where something began or started on a number line, we always want to start at zero, okay, unless we're directed otherwise. So go ahead and get that definition written down. If you need to pause at any time, again, do so, please, and get caught up and then press play. The next word I want you to write down is coordinate. And a coordinate is the distance from the origin. So the distance from basically zero on the number line. And I'll be asking you questions and showing you some examples to find a coordinate for um, say the, a heart, a picture of a heart, or a picture of a star, or even a point that I put on the number line and, and when I label it. So I'll show you some examples here in a second. So go ahead and get origin and coordinate definitions written down in your math notebook. Pause if you need to. Two other words that you're gonna hear me say is hash marks, and those are just the markings on the number line. And then you're gonna hear me say units on the number line, and that means the holes on the number line. So if a number line goes from zero to 12, that would be 12 units on the number line, okay? And you can get those two written down if you want to. So for example, this is number line G or line G, and I've even labeled my number line and named it labeled it with the letter G. You notice that it's in lowercase form, okay? And so what I've done is, today you are basically um, finding the coordinates of shapes or finding the coordinates of a point and telling what that coordinate is. What is its distance from the origin? Its distance from zero. So if you notice, you might be like, okay, Miss Grisby, this is really easy. That's okay, we're gonna start out slow. Again, this is just lesson one. So my first question now, if you notice, remember I can label my line with a lowercase. My points are labeled in capital letters, so make sure you recognize the difference. And then another important thing is my number line is going from least to greatest from left to right. I'm gonna show you something here in a second. So, for example, using these words, these definitions, I could ask, the coordinate of the heart is what? What is the coordinate of the heart? What is the distance from the origin of the heart? And you might be like, okay, Miss Grigsby, it's pretty obvious. It's two, and that is correct. So that would be two. I could also ask, what is the coordinate of point A? What is the coordinate of point A? What is the distance from the origin of point A? And that would be, yes, very good. That would be six. So, just a couple things there. I know this is really basic, but we're going to build on this in the next lesson. So, the only other thing that I want to show you is a number line can also, as long as it's going from least to greatest or greatest to least, it can all the numbers can go from left to right, but they can also go from right to left. So, I've labeled this line, line H, and you might notice something. So up here, my numbers were counting by holes. One, two, three, four, five, we're counting by ones. This number line, hey Gannon, do you care to um, lower that noise level? Thank you, buddy. This number line is going from right to left, but it's still going from greatest to least, or least to greatest, right to left. And if you notice, what do you think this number line, now we have 12 whole units, but what do you think my hash marks are counting by? And yes, you'd be correct. It is halves. So this would be half, one, one and a half, two, two and a half, three, three and a half, four, four and a half, five, and so on. So I could ask you, 
plot, I could even, you know, I could put a point on here, but plot point A at half. So if I want you to plot a point, you would literally be putting the point on there yourself and at half. So here's zero, here's one, halfway would be point A, okay? You could also hear plot point B that lies seven and a half from the origin. So if you remember the origin is zero, they want us to go seven and a half from the origin and plot point B there. So here's seven and eight. So here would be seven and a half. So we would plot point B there. Again, plot point C at 10, label it. So we would go from the origin. We want to start at zero and go all the way to the 10. Okay. So something that you're going to have to do is you're going to have to figure out what they're counting by on their number lines. You know, for example, my first number line was counting by ones on the hash marks. These hash marks were counting by halves, okay? So that's something that you're going to have to think about when you go to work, okay? All right, so I'm going to show you the problem set for lesson one. So you can go ahead and... Um, Pause the video if you want. I'm going to sort of explain really quick if you want to listen just a minute further. So these directions say each shape was placed at a point on the number line S. So if you notice, here's their lowercase. It's actually in cursive, so um, that's just something that they, um, you don't have to have write in cursive. It can be lowercase, uh, excuse me, in non-cursive. And then it says give the coordinate of each point below. So they have the X. They want to know where is the X? What is the coordinate of the X? Now that one, you could probably tell what that one is. Go ahead and um, in your notebook, write down 1A. Or if you have this paper, if you're a non-Google Classroom person, you can actually write it on this paper. So the coordinate of X would be 3. Okay? Now... When you move over to letter B, it says the star. So when we go to the star, you might be like, oh gosh, well here's zero, here's one. That means that we must be counting by a fraction. So remember, we can count equal parts. So here to here is one, here to here is two, and here to here is three. So they're actually counting by thirds. So this would be one third, two-thirds and then our whole would represent three-thirds so now what is the coordinate of the star what do you think the star would be write that down in your notebook or if you have this paper because you're a non-google classroom person you can write it down on the line and yes you are correct it would be two-thirds okay now let's look at the circle what is the coordinate of the circle so if we go to the circle now we know after each hole is going to be one-third two-thirds but when we go to after one, it's not just going to be one third, two thirds. It's going to be one and one third, one and two thirds, two, uh, one and three thirds, which would equal two. Then we start again, two and one third, two and two thirds. So the coordinate of the circle would be what? Yes, it would be two and one third. Good job. And then you come all the way down here and ask the coordinate of the square. What would the coordinate of the square be? So go back to two. Two and one third. Two and two thirds. Three. Three and one third. Three and two thirds. Four. Four and one third. Four and two thirds. Five. So if you said four and two thirds, you are correct. Good job. All right, let's look down at number 2A. It says, plot the point on the number line. So I want you to point to on your phone. Where do you think it says, plot point A so that its distance from the origin is 2. So if we start at 0, they want us to go. So we got to figure out where the 2 is. So here's 3. So what do you think these would represent? Yes, so this would be 0, 1, 2, 3. So plot point A. So that its distance from the origin is two. So one, two. So we would plot point A right there. Okay? This would be one, two, three, four, five, six. So it looks like on their larger hash marks, they're counting by three. So those smaller ones are still representing holes. All right, flip to the back. Or let's look at the back. Those of you who have Google Classroom, you're just... Uh, kind of following along, writing these things down in your notebook. You can even point to your uh, phone or on your screen where you think this would be. 
Those of you who do not have Google Classroom, you can actually write on the paper because you have this at home. All right, so we have number line G. Again, it's labeled from zero to six. So we have six units. Remember, units equals holes. Use number line G below to answer the questions. We're just going to do A and B. So A says plot point A at three-fourths. So this tells us that our hash marks are being represented into fourths. So remember, it would go from least to greatest, left to right, or least to greatest, right to left. So starting here, we have one-fourth, two-fourths, three-fourths. So we would plot point A at three-fourths. Now, this would be two-fourths, but we could also call that half. So two-fourths or half, okay? This says label a point that lies at four and a half as B. So from the origin, we want to go to four and a half. And in this case, we don't really need our force on the line. We know that four and a half is halfway between four and five. So we know it would go, where would that go? Point to it on your phone or go ahead and plot point B on your paper if you have it. And yes, it would go right there. This would be four and a half. We would label it B. So today was just a basic overview of how to plot points on a number line. Remember, they can go from least to uh, greatest to least, or least to greatest, from left to right, or right to left. We can label the line. These are called hash marks. This is a six unit line. We also have the origin of zero, okay? And the coordinate is just, it's distance from the origin. Coordinate of point A is three fourths. Coordinate of point B is four and a half, all right? So if you're on Google Classroom, you can exit out and you can go ahead and work on Lesson 1 Homework Google Form. If you're at home and you have the paper copies, you can move on to Lesson 1 Homework and make sure you use your document telling you which problems to do, okay? All right, guys, have a great day. I'll see you tomorrow.